Today's The Net Guy Show is made possible by the folks over at Vetru. Vetru? Vetro? Whatever it is, they sent me their V5 cooler for review and a benchmark test. Spoiler alert, it's insanely good. If you've never installed a CPU cooler from scratch or replaced your CPU cooler, today you're in for a treat. It's a pretty easy process and I'm going to walk you through all the steps. Some of you might be asking, why should I go with a heat pipe cooler versus a stock cooler or an all-in-one radiator? I'll give you my thoughts on that topic after we get the benchmark numbers from this cooler and a couple of other AIOs. Today's video layout is pretty simple. I'll tell you some things about the cooler since you're obviously too lazy to read the specs because you're watching a video, and then I'll show you how to install the cooler properly in this PC back here, and I'll give you some benchmark numbers to compare it with other popular coolers. I'll also tell you why you might want to choose an air cooler over a water-cooled radiator. Feel free to skip ahead, it doesn't hurt my feelings, and hopefully it gets you all the info you need. If this is your first time here, welcome. I'm John, the Net Guy. I make PC build technology tips and review videos for everyone, regardless of your skill level. And if you're a returning sub, thank you, great to have you back. Now on to the show. Now my buddy Joe from Pinky Tech Channel over on YouTube already showed how well this cooler works on the Intel 10400. I wanted to put it through a real torture test though with my AMD 5800X. If you're interested in his unboxing and results, I've put a link to his channel up in the description in a card right up there. I've been trying to keep this bad boy cool for some time now and she's been putting up a fight. One thing I'll say right away is that they must have put some magic dust in this thing because it has incredible thermal numbers. On lower end CPUs and even Joe's Intel 6 core, it's dropping temps 20 degrees Celsius over stock coolers and even matches the cooling ability of some of the 240 millimeter AIOs I've tested. Not only that, it's quieter to boot and affordable. Okay, review done, you can go buy one now. Okay, you probably want some more. Another awesome thing about this cooler is it comes in at under 150 millimeters tall, which is perfect for a large number of cases. You have your choice of white or black, and fearing that I might have gotten a lucky unit, I personally went out and bought their white version for another project just to see if I might have gotten lucky. I have to say, they both look banging. Next, it has a wide RPM range of 800 to 1700 RPMs, and these are controlled via your motherboard's PWM fan speed headers. Expect to get some noise when running at full speed, which is listed at 30.8 dB. Noise levels are hard to quantify generally unless you have an absolutely soundproof room handy, but the venerable Cooler Master Hyper 212, that's been the mainstay of heat pipe coolers, comes in at 36 dB, almost four times louder. On the other hand, Noctua makes a dual fan cooler that whispers in at 24 dB on full blast. That's over four times quieter, but you're gonna have to shell out three times as much for it. So bonus points for keeping it quiet and cool while being easy on the pocketbook Metro. One beautiful thing about heat pipe coolers is their ability to extract heat so efficiently and effectively, and passively in most cases. The Vetru has five individual heat pipes and direct thermal contact on the CPU for the best cooling potential. The 120mm RGB fan uses hydraulic bearings which explains the quiet operation compared to the sleeved bearing Hyper 212 and other budget coolers. Hydraulic bearings have been known to last over 100,000 hours. That's well over a decade of running your PC 24-7. To keep costs down, they don't include a separate RGB controller, though I really wouldn't expect them to at this level. Connecting it to my motherboard's RGB controller was very easy. CPU support is also very impressive, either Intel or AMD. They've managed to make a single CPU cooler support up to 12 different sockets. Basically, if you have a computer from the last decade with a working consumer-grade CPU, it's going to work. CPU support is listed at 150 watts TDP, so even my hot running 16 thread AMD 5800X was bested by this cooler. They include some thermal compound making this a complete kit for doing your first CPU installation or upgrading the factory cooler. The cooler comes unassembled, meaning that the fan isn't installed and you can add the included AMD or Intel specific adapters to fit to the bottom plate. I'm using the AMD top adapter, and when you're on AMD, you don't need to use the custom backplate. It screws right down to the existing AMD backplate. The instructions are great, easy to follow, 
and don't need any additional explaining text. It's all right there in big pictures. Thermal compound is its own mystery and could be an entire video series, but I've personally always used the single P method in the middle of the CPU normally. Ironically, this is also how much toothpaste you should use regardless of what toothpaste commercials are showing you. My friend Iggy from This Bites For You has experimented on a ton of different cooling compound methods, and for direct contact heat pipes, he likes to use a little more than this and run it down each cooling pipe individually, which is a great method. I've tried this out and had good results on other not so performant or well-made coolers. Okay, so now we're ready to install the CPU cooler. To make things a little easier, grow about three more hands, which you'll need. In all seriousness, there's no easy way to do this part. One trick for AMD is that you can put something under the motherboard that'll hold pressure against the back plate while you're fighting the cooler brackets with your other three hands. I also wouldn't install the fan until we're ready and have the cooler installed. This makes getting the under fan screws even possible. The biggest challenge here is to have even pressure to help spread the CPU compound evenly. If you've ever installed a tire on a car, it's the same process. Work your way across with diagonal motions. Wire up the CPU fan header to the CPU1 labeled port and find your motherboard's addressable header for the colorful bits to work and you're good to go. So let's talk about benchmarks. This cooler gives out some very impressive numbers right off the bat. For the AMD 5800X, if it hits 90 degrees Celsius, the CPU automatically starts to back off the throttle and lowers boost clocks. With this cooler, I ran several Cinebench R23 sessions in a controlled environment at 72 degrees room temperature. The 5800X got up to 86, 87 degrees after a very long run with a stable effective clock speed of 4450 megahertz. This would be an unusual torture test though as you rarely have to run a CPU like this for long periods unless you're ripping Blu-rays or encoding videos. What's amazing to me is that the cooler did this well while being nearly silent at low speeds and only barely noticeable on full blast. Other coolers sound like they're going to come apart and even my very best cooling Cooler Master AIO has to turn up the RPM to reach these kind of numbers. So they've done an amazing job here. If cooling is your goal, the Vetro handles that beautifully. Next up is noise. I absolutely hate my AMD stock cooler on my 3600X as it's constantly cycling the CPU to keep it cool in games with the default fan curves. With this CPU cooler on, the passive cooling of the heat pipes and very large fin surface area needs only minimal airflow so it can run nearly silent during gaming. Plus one to Vetro for the noise level. And lastly, looks. Nothing is quite as boring as a factory AMD cooler. With plenty of RGB and that large fan with translucent fan blades, it just looks cool. I also like the fact that it has a true digital addressable RGB header and not a simple LED strip interface. This means you won't need a controller to run it and they've included an interesting splitter so you don't lose the addressability for other devices when you run this. So would I buy this cooler? Absolutely. Like I said, I paid out of my own money to purchase the white cooler from Amazon because I was so impressed with the first one I got. At their current price, often with available dollars or percentages off discounting, you're looking at probably the best budget cooler you can get in the ultra low budget market. And if you don't like RGB, don't plug it in. So why would you use this over an AIO? Well, for three reasons. Leaks, failure modes, and VRM cooling. If you're running an AIO, there's always going to be a danger of a leak. Leaks won't necessarily destroy your expensive computer depending on where they're at, but they can make a mess and glycol coolant around electronics is not good. Next, if this thing were to fail, I still have an enormous amount of copper directly on the CPU. Many CPU coolers back in the day were completely passive, having no fans at all. When an AIO pump fails, you often won't know this until your motherboard's protection takes over and you can still have damage to critical CPU areas. If a fan starts to fail on this cooler, which I seriously doubt, you'll usually hear it, see it, and you can replace it. Your AIO's pump is almost always not serviceable, so a dead pump 13 months in means buying another entire AIO depending on your warranty. And lastly, many motherboards were designed to have cooling airflow over the CPU area to help keep the VRMs cool. Large heat sinks are used to dissipate all that energy, but if you just have an AIO pump and remote radiator, your VRM temps will be higher. Those are just a few of the reasons to choose air cooling over more complex radiators. 
So congratulations for Vetro for engineering such a cool product. I'm excited to see what else they come up with, and I'd love to see a version of this with dual fans, even though that might be kind of overkill since it does such an amazing job with just one. If you feel like picking up one of these coolers, feel free to use the link in the description to get the best price I've found for it. These links help support my computer part addiction and help me bring you more cool videos without having to resort to begging for money. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in a future video. Hey, thanks for making it to the end of my video. If you want, do me a solid, hit the like button down there, and if you didn't like it, tell me why in the comments. I would love to help you out. If you do need some tech help, you can hit us up on the Discord channel, links in the description below. And why not check out one of these other great videos? It's okay, I'll wait.